everyone. Welcome to the tournament preview show. First off, we're talking to Coach Miller. Coach, congratulations. Second year in a, row, in a row winning that Southern Conference title. What does it say about the guys on this team uh, to come back and repeat? You know, we lost so much when we lost Deontay Baldwin and R.J. White. Um, there's no denying that. And we had to have a group that was committed to improving in the offseason and improving together as a collective unit. And I thought they were really committed to that. And it says a lot about what each of them was willing to, to kind of give to make up for such a big loss last year to come back and kind of achieve the same thing again this year. And not to mention some newcomers that, that really played a big part in what we were doing as well. So, no, it says a ton about these kids that when you lose two great players and two important players in a program, they can come back the next year and, and achieve the same thing. And then heading into the tournament as the top seed, what are some benefits of being number one seed? Well, you know, I think you want to be in that position if you can, you know, and I, th I think we're really excited that we were able to, to hang a banner and, uh, you know, to win a championship. But I think everybody in college basketball, their dream at the end of the tunnel is to play in the NCAA tournament. I mean, I, I think 300 and, you know, 51 teams or however many it is, I think if you asked all 351, that's the goal when it's all said and done. And then the Southern Conference and a lot of the mid-major leagues around America you got to win your conference tournament to get there. So the real basketball is ahead of us. I, I just know that the higher you're seated, the, the better your chances are, and hopefully that gives us a better chance. But we do realize how difficult it is, regardless of what your seat is. We were the one seed last year and came up short, and we've been the one seed here in 2012 and came up short. So I don't think it guarantees anything, but I think it does give you the best chance. And speaking to that, uh, how challenging it might be if regular season is Indian, any indication of that, um, how challenging and how competitive do you think play will be in Asheville? Yeah, it's a, uh, the Southern Conference is just, it's an incredible league. And it, it's evolved a lot in the time that I've been a part of it. You know, I think what's so unique about it the last couple of years is that there's not a game that you say, hey, we should win that game because you know, we have this record or we're in this place in the league. You know, we, we haven't been number one in the league until yesterday, so it's not like we've been sitting there all year. But whether we were one, two, three, four, five, if we were playing somebody that was ninth or tenth, you know, we never walked into the game feeling like we're supposed to win this game. And I think it says so much about the parity in this league. Shoot, the one game, uh, one of the games that we lost on the road was to the team that was tenth, and we were in, like, second, I believe. I mean, so you you got a league that's just – really good from top to bottom. Uh, the teams at the bottom, I don't think, feel like they're at the bottom because they could beat anybody on any given night, and we're going to approach it that way. We think it'll be an unbelievably tough game Saturday, regardless who we play, and if we're fortunate enough to win that one, we know the next one would be tough too, but we're going to just try to take it one game at a time. And what kind of mindset do players and coaches have to have um, in Asheville with three games in three days in order to get a championship? Well, I, I think you got to approach it like a one-game tournament. You know, I, you can't play three games in three days if you don't take care of day one. And so I think the the challenge this week for us as a coaching staff is going to be to get our, our players to understand that we're going up there to play one game on Saturday. And that we don't know who that's going to be yet. We know it'll be either VMI or Citadel. we got to do as much as we can to prepare to win one game. And then if we're fortunate enough to win one, then we'll try to come back and win another one the next day if we get to that place. But there's no point in worrying about three games until you earn the right to play a second one and then maybe earn the right to play a third. And if we can get us get our players and our program to really embrace that type of uh, mindset, I think we have the best chance to actually win one. If, we, if you don't, you go home early. And not knowing your opponent, how do you guys prepare for that game? Well, I, you know, you know that you're going to have one of two opponents. And so I think in practice this week we'll incorporate, incorporate some of the things that we would do to prepare for each team. We obviously won't fully prepare for, for an opponent, as you say, because you don't know exactly who it is. But there's some keys to playing against Citadel and VMI. We'll incorporate some of those things into practice. And then, you know, hopefully when or on Friday night when one of those teams wins, we'll get to the film room and get to a little bit of a walkthrough and, and try to get even more specific uh, in preparation for a game. But it's conference tournament mode. The preparation time is so much shorter for every game. Uh, but, but certainly there's some things we can do this week because we know it's going to be one of two teams. And how do you think um, making it to the championship game last year, how do you think that will better prepare you guys as a team this year? You know, I, I don't know. I, I, I try not to overanalyze things that I, I don't know the answer to, but I do believe that whatever we've experienced in the past is hopefully something we've been able to learn and grow from. And so I know that uh, the guys that were here last year 
you know, were really down about the way it ended. And, and I think they've held that through the summer and their workouts and, you know, their motivation. Um, so, I, you know, I hope they continue to remember what it felt like to come up short and, and hopefully we have a great week in practice. Uh, we really prepare, we're focused, and then we come out to win one game on Saturday. And if uh, we can find a way to get lucky and do that and be fortunate and do that against one of two great teams, then hope we'll get a chance to do it again. But, but I do know that they've held on to that loss last year for a long time, and that's motivated them as the year's going on this year as well. Okay, thank you so much, Coach. Thanks. Good luck. We Thanks. hope to see you pull out a win. Stick around after the break to hear from Coach Patterson. With the 350 sub of the day at Subway, there's never been a better time to try something different. Because every day of the week, you can now get a featured 6-inch Subway sub for just 350 So mix up your lunchtime routine and treat yourself to the endless flavor combinations at Subway. The 350 sub of the day. We took an already great lineup and made it even better. A better price, great taste, and no artificial flavors. The 350 sub of the day, only at Subway. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. To sell your home on time for the most money, you need a sharp agent with a marketing strategy that creates the most demand. Bottom line, you need a partner willing to put their own money on the line for you. In Greensboro and Winston-Salem, it would be Jason Bramblett. He attracts hundreds of buyers and creates so much demand that Jason can guarantee if your home doesn't sell at a price and deadline you agree to, he will buy it. Partner with the agent I trust. Go online or call and get your home sold. Welcome back to the second half of our tournament preview show with Coach Patterson. Coach, first off, you started off the season as the youngest team in the country, so kind of describe that growth uh, throughout the season. Really proud of our team over the season. We've experienced a lot of growth in certain areas. I thought our defensive um, uh, intensity improved as the season moved on. Um, we showed great signs of that. Um, when we played the top team in, the con in, in our conference and now top 25 Mercer, uh, where they shot under 40%. And then our, just our latest game at Western, where Western shot 35% uh, from the floor. So uh, defense and rebounding has to be a key. It's a key in, in moving towards um, our, 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 our tournament in Asheville. And so uh, if we can do two of those things really well, we'll be successful. And as for that game in, uh, at Western, you put in some big minutes, your bench put in some big minutes. What does that mean for your team, and how can that translate over to Chattanooga this weekend? Oh, yeah. So the, our bench did really well, especially Alexis uh, Pitchford. Um, we call her AP. She came in and hit key buckets off, off the bench. Uh, as a matter of fact, eight points in the second half during a really important stretch. When we were down, we were down, and we never gave up. Uh, I was really proud of the heart, the passion, the desire to win, the kind of grinded out attitude that our team has. And so that tells me that a team that's playing like this in February will be, uh, will carry over to March where you just never quit. You got to have that. And so uh, Alexis Pitcher played great minutes um, off the bench, her offensive and her defensive uh, uh, contribution. And what are the keys uh, to victory in that first round game? So we're playing chat, and chat, uh, we, were, we lost to chat twice, a very good veteran team. The key to um, uh, moving forward against chat is to defend their isolations. They, they set it up where you have a lot of isolation, so we have to be very organized in our scheme and how we're going to defend that. Also, we need our big three to play well. We have to have Nadine, who's leading us in scoring, EJ, who's lead second in scoring, and Tasia, who's third to, to um, do well, in addition to having some strong bench play. And how do you prepare your team to play three games in three days, and what do you think the biggest challenge of that will be? The great thing about um, the tournament in Asheville is it, there's a lot of energy there. We're excited about it. This is a, a new season. We look at the season in three parts, our uh, preseason games, our conference games, and postseason. So postseason is entirely new season and so with that the the people who have done well throughout the year it's it can do really well in a tournament we're going to really focus hard this week in preparing to win to win three games in three days in four days and what is your overall health of your team going into the tournament well we have some that you know availability is the best ability we do have uh one of our starters alexis willie who's um while it's been out for two games, 
um, it's really made an impact uh, on, on our team because of the, uh, she shoots the three ball which stretches out our offense. Um, but uh, we're not sure about her health for the tournament. We've had Sierra Crudup to come in and play some valuable minutes. Um, Anika has come in and played some valuable minutes. Uh, Mango has played some valuable minutes. And so that's a part of the game, being able to step up when players are, hard, are, are injured. So our guard play has, has uh, we've had some setback in our guard play with the injury. Um, she would be our, 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 she's our fourth leading scorer, very good uh, passer and, and good defender in our three zone. So uh, we got to be able to move forward without her. Every team in the country it faces some type of injury, and it just it leads room for the people on the bench to do really well and come in and contribute. Okay, thank you so much, Coach. So this weekend, guys, tune into ESPN3 to catch the SOCON tournament. Good luck to both the men's and women's team.